Ladies and gentlemen, welcome! It's once again SRA Simulators Asia GT Series time here on Apex Racing TV. I am Marco Barbanera. We have Scott Newton behind the cameras, and of course, together with me as always in the commentary booth, it's Wei and Chan. Hello! Hey there, uh, Marco. Hey everyone. Great to be back for another week of Sim Races Asia GT action here. We come here from, we come up live to you from Watkins Glen tonight. Of course, this is the Watkins Glen that we all know and love on iRacing. Absolutely, it's the most popular road course in all of iRacing and we have got some cloudy weather. Uh, track temperature is in the low high, high 20s, so it's going to be a lot of grip for these guys and ideal racing condition, I'd say. So I'm expecting some great, great racing, as you see now on screen, the temperature and a little bit of wind, but not too much. So I would say these drivers couldn't ask for a better weather today or tonight, depending on where you're watching for this uh, one hour race as per usual. We are uh, in the closing stages of the championship, we have four rounds to go, including this one. It's a 10 round championship, so we are getting very, very close to the end. And Jaiserin Jali is your leader with 539 points. Mike Burdett follows with 480. Leonardo Lopez de Oliveira, 452. Ahmad Nurazam has got 435. Then there's a significant gap to P5, Peter Claviter, 377, Linar Kaxi, 374, Grand Crow has got 366, Niranjan Kumar, 344, Abir Putra, 342, and rounding up the top 10, uh, Simon Sanchez, uh, Macau Sim Racing, 334 points, as you see the rest of the entries on your screen. Like I said, four races to go away on, so we are getting very, very close to crunch time and the top of the table is still very close, I'd say. And those three drivers know one mistake and your season could be in jeopardy. Crunch time indeed. As is always known in this Sim Races Asia series, it's not about finishing first in one race. It's actually more about your consistency as the points do stack up uh, in the sense that if your finishing positions are consistent, you do not actually need a race win in order to secure the championship. But of course, with that said, we do have many, many fast drivers in the previous uh, uh, Anthony Winkleman, he's back and we know how fast he is. We've seen him at the start of this season, one of the fastest guys around. Also got um, Jasri Jolly who's up there and yeah, but a bunch of fast drivers, the uh, season regulars this time, who have come on tonight to grace the grid. Yeah, we've got a 19 car grid for this race, unless someone is very, 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 very late in joining uh, the grid. And we've got five minutes left in qualifying with, uh, like you said, Winkelmann right now in uh, the provisional pole with a 41.3 with Grand Crow uh, in the Porsche 41.5 getting ready for a flying lap as you see in third place uh, there is Jolly with 41.6 but he's currently in the pits maybe waiting just a bit to get his uh, final lap in now, uh, we had the broadcast as per usual on Wednesday and uh, Weian was our guest. So, of course, of the official iRacing Le Mans series. So, we, had, we have an idea about what's going to happen in this, uh, in this race. And we saw, to the surprise of, uh, I'd say myself, but maybe even other, other that was a complete Porsche dominance and some Fords and the Ferraris were severely lacking in pace. Exactly. Well, the thing with here, uh, with the series here in Sim, Sim Races Asia is that uh, drivers are limited to one car that they have to stick to throughout the season. So be it Porsche, be it the Ferrari 488 or 
the Ford GT. They don't have to stick to this car for the season. They have, uh, they do don't have uh, the opportunity to change their car, but that's only upon request. As cameras are now at Leonardo Lopez de Oliveira, because all season long he's known to be a fierce competitor, a fierce fighter, because he's who usually perhaps qualify among the top two, and. He, he seems to be one of those drivers that are able to gain position rapidly. As we see, uh, Oliveira on the start finish line is in P7 and he will uh, remain there for the time being, as Mike Burdett is also finishing his flying lap. But without any significant improvement as we are almost close to the final two minutes once again i remind you that if the guys are able to get to the start finish line before the checker flag they will have time to get one more lap in even if the time is up that is a significant difference with the official racing series where when the time is up the time is up there is no extra allowance to get that final lap in like you for example see in real life series so it's not over uh, until a couple of minutes after the the checkered flag waves, but I think uh, even though the gap between the top three is very, very small, uh, I think that uh, Winkelmann, Crow and Jali are looking uh, good value for the first three positions, even though you see basically between P3 and P5, there's uh, nothing between Jali, Krawitter and Kumar. And like we said in the beginning, this track is so popular, everybody knows it, everybody, including me, basically uh, it is so popular that I don't think I've ever had, had to learn it. I mean, it's just you go, you go out there and you have such a good feeling with this track, with most of the cars on iRacing and these GT cars, of course, race here in real life as well in the IMSA series. So, and the racing is, is always spectacular and so will be today. We have to be careful, of course, not of the first corner because there's plenty of uh, of, uh, uh, of escape road on the left side, even though there can be contact there. But yes, as a way on, I think that if some of the top runners end up in the fence there, there's a huge chance of a car bouncing back into the pack and that can spell trouble like we are seeing here for Kevin Wang. This section here, especially this place here, is going to be extremely difficult if somebody gets into that fence in the beginning of the race. Absolutely. And uh, this circuit actually has the unwritten nickname called Watkins Dega, and it's not without reason because the walls, there is runoff, but the, the walls are also rather close uh, alongside the track. So any mistake, any pile up, and it's going to be, as you said, a pile up for cars that will come up from behind. So of course this circuit a good mix of high speed corners as well as uh, high speed long and short stretches. So we will see a little bit of uh, drafting, slip streaming and some last minute straight line passes that will take place here tonight. So in the end we will have I think 21 drivers because at the last minute our good friend Jamal Khandur has entered the race. Hopefully his connection will hold uh, this time around because we know he's been unlucky. As the checker flag you see is in the air, has been in the air for the past minute or so, so the drivers are getting their laps in. Grand Crow is trying to get the pole position, but he will fail by about three tenths of a second. And we see, I think, everybody is done with their laps and we can have the start uh, starting grid for you guys on screen right now so it was anthony winkelman taking the pole position grand crow two tenths of a second behind and jays rinjali is in uh, third position peter claviter is in fourth niranjan kumar fifth ahmad nurazam is in sixth and leonardo lopez de Oliveira is in seventh place Sophil arifin is in eighth position lachlan crow in a ninth and abirafti putra runs up the top ten then is arlan sanders a new name i think in p11 brian ramforce in uh, P12 and Linar Kaxi in 13th and Alex Paul in 14, the two Ferraris. Uh, Simon Sanchez in 15th place, uh, Chris Barsin in 16th position, Mark Dredge in 17th, Kevin Wang in 18th position, Mike Burdett 19th, and Jamal Kandur is in 20th. 
position we also have one other driver it's paul nelson in p21 long pace lap here the entire pace lap uh and i think uh these drivers will have to get ready of course we said it's going to get feisty in those asses and they will have one entire lap and sometimes i i find this to be a bit uh counterproductive let's say because when it's a short pace lap the base car gets in and you start but now you have to wait an entire lap and you are so eager to get going sometimes uh you are so excited that you make a mistake in the first corner and that's exactly what we don't want to happen here come on don't <laughs> jinx it uh, marco i think that's a uh, characteristic of the older circuits here on iRacing of course watkins Glen has been on the iRacing service for quite a long time i think back from 2010 so uh the pace lab is actually a whole lap instead of only one half section as we see in the newer circuits luckily we are not at road america although we love that place <laughs> you know that the pace lap there is very long and we are rolling uh, from the starting grid once again cloudy day uh conditions are quite similar to what we had on wednesday in the official series and the long snake of cars gets ready uh, the strategy of course one stop as late as possible for these guys they have one fast repair available if they get damage they can drive back to the pits and get a quick fix basically only once during the race and hopefully you don't want to use that but if you have to use that you will have to hope that it's in a moment when you can get in fuel until the end of the race and get out because otherwise you are doing a two-stopper and that will put a great uh, great disadvantage on your chances at a good finish uh these cars have also got 20 incident limits for themselves three more incident uh, point uh incident point allowances uh, than the official series so i mean, i'm quite sh certain that this should not be much of a problem for these guys here 